Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my kitchen. Today we'll be cooking some delicious Italian vegan food and I'm super excited to show you how I make everything. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous because I've never shot in this space like that before, so yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so if you don't know me, hi, I'm Laura. I make videos about veganism, traveling, learning, lifestyle design, and minimalism. So if you're interested in any of those, <laughs> make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so that you're notified whenever I post new videos. You can follow me on Instagram. You can join my Facebook group. You can become a patron of this channel if you want to get access to more exclusive content. So yeah, that's everything. And today I'm gonna be cooking two Italian meals, dishes, one, <laughs> one dinner idea and one dessert idea. And what I'm going to make is I'm gonna make fresh pasta. Okay, it was a disaster. I think I did a very bad job at this. So my pasta, I mean, I'll try to eat it. I don't want to throw it away, but just in case, like, can you see it? Like, I have a second pot. <laughs> I have a second pot where I'm boiling water for spaghetti, so... Now let's get back to the video. With pomodoro sauce and fake ragu. And I'm also going to make panna cotta for dessert. Panna cotta? Panna cotta? Panna cotta. And to give you some more information, I'm going to be cooking with Vicoco. And if you don't know what Vicoco is, it's the first online vegan cooking school. And they have courses on how to cook traditional dishes from many different countries. They have the Thai cuisine course, they have the Vietnamese cuisine course, and they have the Italian cuisine course. And that's what I'm going to do today. And the recipes that I'm going to use are made by a Tuscan chef. So if you don't know, the Italian cuisine varies across the country and I'm going to be doing what Italian people in Tuscany cook, I hope. <laughs> so again, if you're from Tuscany, you can let me know. So I'm gonna start from the panna cotta base. Okay, so let's start with the panna cotta soy cream base. And for that, we need the soy cream. Okay, I think we got it. And now let's check what we need. One tablespoon sugar and two teaspoons agar agar. Okay, so we've got our agar here. It's from Czechia and I bought it in my local vegan store. I can't get it open. Oh, okay, I have to cut it. <laughs> okay, so we need two teaspoons of agar agar and one tablespoon of sugar. I don't have the vanilla beans, so, so vanilla sugar will have to do. I might as well do this. <laughs> so now we have to bring it to a boil and stir everything together. All right, here we go. Okay, so now we have to take it off the heat and keep stirring, I think. <laughs> oh, wow. It smells very nice. Okay, so now we're pouring it into a glass and I just have one glass. So we're going to have only one panna cotta between the both of us. So let's do this. I think it's a bit too much for one glass <laughs> because we still have to leave room for the sauce, which we're going to make in a second. Yeah, so I think it's a bit too much for one glass, but we'll see how much of the sauce can actually fit here. I don't think a lot of sauce can fit here because as you can see, it's almost full to the brim. <laughs> And apparently, if you want to take the panna cotta out of the glass, it should refrigerate for at least 
12 hours, but we don't have that much time, so we'll have to see how this one turns out. Okay, so that is going to the fridge for two to three hours, but I think two. Oh, Italy is pasta. And for the vegan people, that's one problem. <laughs> Italy, we use the eggs. Well, in the north of Italy, in the south of Italy, we don't use the eggs. Why? It's one legend. I love how they provide so much background information and some cultural um, trivia and fun facts. It's very, very interesting. And I also love that it's a true Italian chef. Like, I prefer to eat the eggs. Like, he is the teaching us. That's amazing. So if you guys would like to check out Vicoco and get your free 14-day trial, go to vicoco.com slash Laura, the link is in the description box, and you'll get your two first weeks for free. And then if you want to become a member, if you want to subscribe to the courses, you'll get a 10% discount, which will be added to your order automatically, and you have it forever. So everything 10% off with the link in the description and yeah, so far, I have to tell you that I'm so <laughs> impressed with myself. Like literally, this is the first time that I'm actually following a traditional recipe, like made by a chef and the chef is teaching me, like he himself. And yeah, I'm super proud of myself. And it's easier than I thought it would be. Okay, so let's make the coulis and the pomodoro sauce. So in the meantime, we're going to prepare the raspberry coulis that will go on top of our panna cotta. And I'm gonna use frozen raspberries because <laughs> I don't have any fresh ones. So I'm gonna put the frozen raspberries into a bowl. So they're gonna defrost a little bit, but I'm gonna put the sugar on top already. So when it's defrosting, it mixes with the sugar. And apparently we have to add a pinch of pepper and I hope it's not gonna ruin it. I trust Alberto completely on this. And the last ingredient is basil leaves and we have to marinate it for one hour. All right, now we're making the pomodoro sauce and we're starting from peeling the onion. And apparently we'll only use one half of the onion and we can cut it however we want because at the end we'll blend everything in. Okay, now we crush the garlic. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add the olive oil, the onion and the garlic into the pot and we're going to start cooking it. And in the meantime, I'll cut the tomatoes and I'll add them to the onion and the garlic. We have to keep the garlic for something else or get rid of it altogether. I'll keep it because I don't like throwing food away. Okay, we have a problem, so I'm gonna transfer it to a bigger pot. <laughs> So we had to change the pot because <laughs> the previous one was just too small for all of the tomatoes. And now I'm gonna cook the tomatoes and the onion. I'm gonna add pepper and salt and I'm gonna cook it for 25 to 30 minutes. Our pomodoro sauce is cooking and we're going to prepare fake ragu. And I'm going to change the recipe a bit because in the original recipe they want us to use celery <laughs> and I don't like celery so I'm going to use a tzatziki instead and I'm going to use some cabbage leaves. And we'll start from peeling the onion and cutting everything into cubes.
So this is our panna cotta base and our raspberries are beautiful and defrosted and I'm gonna put them on top. And that's it. That's your panna cotta. So as you know, my pasta was a total fail and I had to cook some spaghetti and that's my spaghetti with my fake ragu and I'm gonna test it. Test it? I'm gonna try it for you. It's definitely different than, for instance, soya ragu. It was very good. It was worth it. And I like the spaghetti more <laughs> than my pasta. And now the panna cotta or the panna cotta. I'm super excited to try it. Wow. It's so creamy. Seriously. It's delicious. Oh wow, I love it. If you want to try it, go for it. So easy. Oh my God. So delicious. I think I love the raspberry sauce more than the strawberry one. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna finish my panna cotta. Panna cotta, panna cotta. Please let me know how I should pronounce it in a second. Um, but that's it for this video. Remember to check out Bicoco if you'd like to cook something Italian for yourselves and it's vegan and it's delicious and I honestly can't wait to dig into it You can check out my other vegan videos here and here and you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and follow me on Instagram if you want to see more of my daily life and until next time Buona giornata <laughs>